In financial circles, Professor Tumusimam Tewiri is the undisputed economic reformist. He has been in the trenches for nearly half a century, and his first public battle was with President Idi Amin himself, which he lost and fled the country to stay alive and be able to fight another day. New Vision TV now brings you the battles this Muchiga warrior has fought for five decades until the ongoing one and most likely his last public battle. Young Emmanuel Tumusimam Tewiri was still a teenager when he joined Makere University in 1970. But age didn't deter him, and a year later, he embarked on a campaign to become the university guild president, which he did successfully. But there was a new national president, the military strongman Idi Amin Dada, who did not entertain any other president in the country. The brutal military general and the hot-headed Muchiga boy were soon on a collision course. After a few run-ins with the military president, Yang Mutebre cut his losses and ran. He ended up in Dahan University to complete his undergraduate studies in economics, which he did with flying colors, rushing through his masters, and was enrolled for a PhD at the prestigious Oxford University. But Mutebire gravitated to where the action was, and by 1977, he was firmly established in Tanzania to do his fieldworks for the Oxford PhD and lecturing economics at the University of Dar es Salaam. As the battle to remove Idi Amin reached its climax in 1979, Mutebire set aside the PhD programs and returned to Uganda to offer his legendary intellectual capabilities to the post-Amini government. The first of his multiple deployments was as deputy principal private secretary to the presidents that followed Amin until 1981. In 1981, Mutebire was deployed in his proper environment as undersecretary in the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development. In 1982, Mutebire became the chief government planning economist. This was the start of his role as father of Uganda's economic reforms. Although the country had been plunged into a civil war in the Luo Triangle, the economic reforms in partnership with IMF and World Bank started. And Mutebire was first at the center of it. In 1985, Mutebire was appointed permanent secretary in the prime minister's office, which in reality was running the non-political functions of government. For that, the time the state was under the Acholi faction of the army and had overpowered the Lango faction and was struggling to hold power while several other fighting groups had petitioned Kampala City, yet the NRA was steadily squeezing the whole lot out. In 1992, Mutevira assumed the key position of secretary to the treasury, succeeding the highly respected James Kahosa in the office that also doubles as permanent secretary of the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning. The country had gone into full-scale privatization and liberalization, and Uganda Revenue Authority was being set up to take over from the different government departments that had been collecting different types of revenue. Mutebire thus midwifed the new economic regime, and this was the hardest transition in the country's microeconomic atmosphere. Over a hundred major state enterprises, including the telecoms, were sold off. Foreign exchange trade was liberalized, regulatory authorities were set up, and tens of thousands of public employees were retrenched. After overseeing the major fiscal reforms of the country, Mutebire in 2000 became Governor Bank of Uganda. In this position, he presided over the country's monetary policy reforms, helping to nurture stability of the shilling, which became freely convertible under his watch in the early 90s. After a decade at the central bank, Mutebire became uncomfortable with what he saw as gross indiscipline by the executive. He fought hard and even went ahead to give an interview to the Financial Times of London, denouncing what he saw the government is financial indiscipline ahead of the 2011 election. This looked like a departure showdown between Mutebire and the NRM government. 
However, his contract was renewed and he is still in office. Two years ago, another major battle erupted pitting Mutebi against the finance minister and the new attorney general. Government wanted to build a mint to start printing currency notes in the country. Mutebi vehemently opposed the proposal and explained how the use of hard currency is expected to decline as more transactions became digital. He portrayed the mint plan as archaic and unviable. Mutebire also endeavored to explain why many countries, even those with the capacity, do not print their money and illustrated that the venture is quite unviable for Uganda. Now the biggest of all battles seems to be coming at the end of Mutebire's career. Now aged 69 and most likely serving out his last contract. His central bank is under an unprecedented investigations by Parliament's Committee on Statutory Authorities and State Enterprises. The accusations are simply terrible, indicating that there are even no records of major transactions like the liquidation of seven commercial banks and that the assets of the closed banks were sold off at incredibly high discounts in suspiciously unclear deals. Could such madness really have taken place under Mutebiri's watch? On his part, Mutebiri has assigned most of the blame to Justin Bajenda, a former director of bank supervision, whom he even accuses of illegally signing a deal handing over Gold Trust Bank to DFCU Bank in 2014. Without knowledge of the governor, his deputy, or the bank secretary, the only three officers who were authorized to sign on behalf of the central bank. Emmanuel Mutebiri's biggest asset is his name and reputation. Could he afford to lose this battle, which will negate all his great achievements that are the envy of all other economists in Africa?